All right, next, let's talk about audio. How do we represent audio? So first, let's say, let's, let's look at what it means to hear audio. We perceive sound when a series of air compressions vibrate a membrane in our ear, which sends a signal to our brain. Sound is then transmitted as sound waves, which is vibration of air, and enters our ear here, and, and enters the ear canal and reaches the eardrum. This is the eardrum right in here. Second, the sound waves lead the vibrations of the eardrum, which also vibrates a small bone behind the ear. You see that right in here? Third, the vibration motion of the bone makes the fluid in the inner ear to vibrate. The vibrating waves in the inner ear fluid causes the sensory hairs cells in the inner ear to bend. The hair cells changes the movement into electrical signals. These electrical signals are transmitted through the ears, auditory nerves, up to the brain where it is interpreted as sound. Now, let's go back and figure out how we're going to do this. We use an electrical signal to vibrate the membrane of a speaker to produce the sound waves. Because remember, if we go back, the sound waves has to go into our ear, right? It's really just compressed air. So we use a speaker to compress air. But that speaker has to be controlled by electrical signal. So this is our electrical signal here over time. The electrical signal has an amplitude of how much voltage is going through to the speaker. An electric signal is passed through a wire coil attached to a diaphragm with a magnet fixed within the coil, which causes the diaphragm to move at the same frequency as the original sound vibrations. As the diaphragm moves, it will cause the air around it to vibrate as well and will transmit sound waves the same as the original sound waves. And then it reaches our ear. Now, to convert this electrical signal to binary data, we do this by taking the electrical signal that was used to control the sound wave and we break it up into binary. And we, and we break it up every 44 100 times per second. So it's 44,100 times per second we break it up. We take each one of those samples and we get a base 10 number for the amplitude. We take that base 10 number for the amplitude and we convert that into binary. And we take all the samples together and we save it into a binary file, for example, into an MP3 file. So all the, imp so all the binary information inside an MP MP3 file corresponds to an amplitude along this wave at a particular time. Next, to convert the sound back into an audible sound, we take the MP3 file, we extract all the binary information out of it. And so for, for example, and so for every eight bits, we say that's a number. And then we take that binary information and we convert it back into base 10. And we take that base 10 information and we convert that into electrical signal. And that electrical signal vibrates the membrane of a speaker. And that speaker compresses air and we hear it as sound. And that's the process. Next, images. How do we do this? So images, if you look at it, is just a nice rectangular grid of colored pixels. If we break it up into a grid, each grid is composed of a red, a green, and a blue. So for example, if you look at this grid point here, it's composed of red, green, and blue. And each one has a number that's associated with how much of the red, the green, and the blue is turned on. So color values vary from 0 to 255 for each of the three colors. Therefore, you need 8 bits to represent each color. Because remember, 2 to the 8 is equal to 256. So you need 24 bits to represent each and every pixel in this image. So you can see how that's a lot of data. All right, let's look at the color chart. So if I look at a single pixel and I got 0, 0, 0 in a color chart, that means I'm getting a black color. Or if I got 255, 255, 255, I'm getting a white color for that particular pixel. So right here at this guy's helmet, the pixels here is probably 255, 255. And at varying combinations of zeros and numbers between 0 and 255, you get different color channels. So although, although this color channel shows everything is as 0, 255, you can get variations. So you can get 50, 50, 50, and that actually be gray. Or if I had 100, 0, 100, it'll still be magenta, but be a darker shade of magenta. 
All right, let's look at this, how we do this in binary. So now, if I take this pixel, I know I got the numbers 119, 136, and 156 for the red, the green, the blue. I just take these numbers, and I convert them into binary, and I store that information in the file. And I go through this process for every single pixel in the image. All right, last, let's talk about video. Now, video is kind of special. Remember I told you video is a combination of audio and images put together. So what is video? Look at this. It's really multiple frames. It's really multiple images called frames taken over a period of time. So if we look at this as time, this is a person playing tennis, and these pictures were taken over a, over a time frame. Also, the audio is recorded with each and every frame. Then the next thing we do, we take each and every frame, and we convert that into binary using the same process we do for images. And then we take the audio signal and we take the voltage levels and we convert that into binary. And then we add together both the video and the audio in binary and we store it together into one single file. And that's how you represent video. So really, as I said, video is really a mixture of images and sound put together. All right, so that is the end of our lecture for today on data representation. Talk to you guys later.